Can you say good morning? Good morning. Do you know what day it is? Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah, yeah. We're starting a weekend reading one. <laughs> you have to get a surprise outside. You have to. Have to. Okay? Going outside to see how do you guys like my steering wheel here? <laughs> I'm trying to hide my camera because I'm at the library right now and I'm surrounded by people waiting for it to open because it's three minutes to nine and the library opens like directly on time. So I'm just sitting in my car because it's like 16 degrees out. I'm not about to go stand outside the doors. I'm picking up a hold on a book. I'll show you the book later. The not sequel from what I understand, but like a companion novel to it comes out this year and I've heard a lot of hype uh, not even a lot of hype. I've heard hype for it, so I'm gonna read the first one, hopefully. Look at me, already smashing my New Year's goals. I haven't done a vlog in a long time because it, I just haven't been feeling it, and, uh, with the kids home for the holidays, there wasn't really much happening. You would just get lots of videos of me talking about what I read and doing boring stuff all the time. So, I'm doing a weekend vlog. In any case, um, I'm gonna do a weekend vlog because tonight is Catherine Arden's signing, and I'm going to it and I figured I would try and get some footage there, but it's really hard when it's a author event to get a lot of footage without feeling like a creep. So I'll do my best. My phone is definitely falling. I am going to run into the library and I'll see you guys later. Okay. Um, I'm leaving in about an hour and 15 to go to the Catherine Arden signing event. I'm getting ready for that right now. I don't really have much updates. I didn't read a whole lot today, just probably about 5% of The Wicked King, which puts me at about 37%. So I'm getting through not as fast as I'd hoped, but my weeks are always busier than I anticipate because that's what it's like to have three children. Any case, um, I never updated what I got from the library and that is Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. Um, I've seen a lot of buzz about her book that's coming out this year and if I'm not mistaken it's a companion novel to this so it's not directly related it's not directly a sequel but uh, one of my best friends is Malaysian and I read a blurb that said that the new book this year is about Malaysian witches I know nothing about this it might also be about Malaysian witches it doesn't say anything about it but I figured I'd give it a shot and then if it's good check out the new one which is I believe called the Serpent Queen I could be wrong. <laughs> In any case, it's going on my TBR cart at, somehow. Yep, there it is. In my TBR cart now. Hopefully I get to it soon. I didn't expect it to come in that fast. <laughs> but here we are. Came up here to get my extra books from Catherine that I uh, hopefully, I assume she does multiple signings. I mean, a, it's a total of three extra or three total books because I have Baron the Nightingale sign. I'm excited to go. I'm not really feeling anxious yet, but I'll get anxious before I leave. So that's that. Uh, that's my update. I'm also reading Mistborn. Did I take it out? Yeah, I did. Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. It wasn't on my TBR, but I was done reading. What did I finish? I can't remember what I finished on my Kindle but I had nothing to read and so I thought of what was on my TBR cart and I checked my library's ebook collection for basically everything and came up with Mistborn being readily available, the very first in the series. I didn't think it was that long, but it turns out it's going to take me uh, Kindle estimated 18-ish hours to read. And then, you know, it doesn't look like a tome, but this is a mass market paperback if I'm not mistaken, so the text is super tiny. I am about 12% into Mistborn and loving it and I've put it off for a very long time. I've owned this book since before I had children. <laughs> so I'm glad to finally get to it. So that's my update. Wicked King's at 37%, Mistborn's about 12%. Um, I'm gonna get The Winter of the Witch finally tonight and hopefully I can finish The Wicked King like this weekend and get uh, The Winter of the Witch started as well. So I will check in next on my way to the event probably. guys it is Friday the 11th last night was the Catherine Arden event I didn't take a whole lot of footage there because it's kind of awkward to have my phone out recording like 
while she's speaking and other people that don't have my permission to film. But it was such a great event, honestly. She basically gave her like life story post high school that led up to writing The Bear and the Nightingale. And then like her talk about moving from like place to place to place and how she wrote this book and then how she like shopped for an agent and gave herself specific time frames and goals in order to get it and how she never really thought she would be an author. It wasn't one of the things in her life goals. It just kind of happened and now that's what she's doing and she loves it and it was so inspiring and she was so sweet and kind and intelligent and fascinating and I was super lucky and that it was like a small gathering. There weren't a whole lot of people, maybe 50-ish, probably a little bit more than that, but I sat in a row with a bunch of women that were really cool and we talked about all different kinds of books and like Lee Bardugo to Cassandra Clare to Lainey Taylor and Dee Schwab and we had a really good conversation and we ended up in line together too ticket wise so that was kind of cool. And I just love these events because it really inspires me to like try and reach my goal of writing but also it's so nice to be surrounded by people that love the same kind of books and writing and hobby that you do. I just came home and I like talked my husband's ear off about the event. I got my book signed. I'd already had Bear in the Nightingale signed and personalized a while ago. I ordered it from her local, Catherine's local bookstore. So she signed it and so I only brought The Girl in the Tower and then obviously picked up The Winner of the Witch and I brought Small Spaces, which Chelsea had sent me, which was awesome. And it turns out that Catherine has four books for the middle grade so small spaces is the first but there's going to be one set in winter spring and summer i'm looking forward to those seeing what happens and she's working on a standalone novel so for any of you guys that are Catherine arden fans that won't get to see her and don't know that now you know i can't wait to see her standalone she said takes place during world war one and she's really excited about it so that makes me excited even though literally if you watched i don't I should upload it before this vlog gets uploaded. If you watch my Out of the Comfort Zone tag, I don't like war stories. <laughs> so we're gonna see what happens. Um, I'm about to take a bath. My kids are gonna be out of the house today most of the day except for the baby, so I'm hoping to get a lot of stuff done instead of reading because my house is a fucking bomb. Um, so we'll see. I'll check in later. Bye. Good morning guys, it is Saturday, that's about 9.30 in the morning. Just wanted to give a quick update. Um, I didn't read a whole lot yesterday because I was exhausted <laughs> after the event and staying up way, way, way too late, way past my bedtime. I was really, really tired yesterday so I barely read, but I read this morning. Also, I read a little last night, I should say, rewind, that I had put a recommendation in for my library to buy Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen McManus, and they bought it, and I was first in line to get it. So, didn't expect that, and now I, uh, I'm trying to get through that. So I read two chapters of that. I'm already pretty hooked. I really, really liked her first debut novel, One of Us is Lying, so I assume I will like this as much as I liked that. Um, I did that. I didn't read any Mistborn. Trying to get this is how much I have left of The Wicked King. I'm um, gonna be brutally honest here. It's taking me a while to get through because I'm just not loving it. Now, if I hearken back on reading The Cruel Prince, I really, really struggled to get through the beginning of that too. I felt like not a whole lot happened through the beginning. And then the end was what made it a four star instead of a three star. And I think the same thing is happening with The Wicked King. I'm pretty bored and I just hit book two. So maybe things will like pick up now. So I don't know if that's just her style or what the situation is. And I'm not sure that it's for me. Part of what I don't like is probably what some people love and it's the juxtaposition of 
the human world and the fairy world. And when we go into the human world in this book, I get pulled from the story and I, no spoilers, but there's a scene in the fairy world where fairies have like got specific products from the human world that they're carrying around and it's just a line within the other thoroughly fantasy scene and it pulled me from it and it's starting to irritate me anytime there's some kind of crossover which is the whole basis I guess of the book and so again maybe it's just not my style. We'll see what I think at the end. Currently it's about a three star read, maybe three and a half star and unless something really 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 good happens in the last hundred or so pages, it's staying there. So. I'm excited to get done with it so that I can move on to The Winter of the Witch. That's my update. I'll see you guys when I see you. <laughs>sunday what time is it it's like almost 11 30. doing a quick update i've got my baby up here we just had some roasted red pepper pasta so he is messy and needs a bath and he's touching all my books there he is there's the little bud uh, i wanted to talk briefly about the wicked king as i finished it last night right buddy did i finish this last night yeah and i have some thoughts this book and this series is very beloved by our community. And I understand why, sorta kinda. But also, I feel like a lot of nothing happens in the first book. And I felt the same about The Cruel Prince. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. And then, of nothing. Like, it's boring. I have to like tell myself, all right, it'll, it'll get good, it'll get good. And then book two happens and a lot of action and a lot of important moves are made on the characters' parts. And that's always what raises the star rating for me in the end. The Wicked King was a three star read for me up until the very bitter end. And I ended up giving it four stars on Goodread, but it's more of like a three and a half star read. I liked it. Again, it suffered from going on too long. The politics were played too. And I, I think I talked last night about how it going into the human world and having that crossover sometimes really just doesn't jive in my brain that much. The only thing holding the book together for me really and truly is, as most people talk about, the Jude and Cardin dynamic. I will obviously pick up in 2020 The Queen of Nothing, I think that's what it's called, because obviously I'm going to finish the series and I'm going to own them all because they look very pretty on my shelves, but it's not my favorite, so I'm not... I'm not diving into the, the Cruel Prince hype. I think I'm starting to get a bit of a reputation <laughs> on my channel for not just diving in to the hyped books and saying how much I love them. So that said, that's kind of my update. Um, I'll get probably more in depth when I do my wrap up at the end of the month. But that said, I finished this and now I am on to Winter of the Witch, which I am highly anticipating. I've read about 35, 36 pages so far. It has already smacked me in the face with goodness. It's a long one. I think it's close to 400 pages. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna race through it. Catherine Arden does write in a style that takes time and you don't fly through it. And I think I suffered in the second book for that reason because it was very much a bridge book between the two. But from what I've heard about The Winner of the Witch, it's really good and it's going to kill me. A little bit. I don't have much to say about it yet except it really does just pick up from where the second book left off and uh, a lot has happened in those 30 something pages. So that's it on that front. And then finally I'm still reading Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen McManus on my phone. I'm probably about chapter five or six in and just like one of us is lying. It's told from multiple perspectives, just two perspectives so far. A daughter named Ellery who has a twin named Ezra and then they move back to the town their mother is from. Their mother was also a twin, but her twin was killed way back in the day when she was still a teenager. 
and they've moved back because her mom since then has been like addicted to opioids and she's in rehab so they're living with their grandmother in this town where homecoming queens are killed and they still don't know who's doing it then they're also getting the perspective of Malcolm, who lives in this town, whose older brother was suspect of the most recent murder, so his family is kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? People just don't like them in the town because they don't trust them. And the mother, Malcolm's mother, has married one of the most prominent men in the town. So he's got a stepsister who's the most popular girl in school, mm -hmm. AKA she's probably going to be nominated as the homecoming queen. Um, so those are the stories we're getting. And, uh, it's very fascinating. There's already been a death, so I really like it. It's very fast-paced. I'm almost a quarter of the way through already, and I've only been reading it when I can, which is not a whole lot of time. So it's going through, and I've put Mistborn on hold, not because I'm not liking it, because I'm absolutely loving it, but I put One of Us is Lying on hold as I recommended it to my library to purchase and they purchased it immediately and I was the first one in line. So I don't wanna end up finding out I'm like 17th in line after my thing goes up um, and then I have to wait forever. So I'm gonna try and rip through One of Us is Lying and then get back into Mistborn. I'm really, really loving Mistborn, but I'm probably only like, I don't know, something like this far into it. This is a trade, like a paperback, mass market paperback, so. The text is incredibly tiny. It doesn't look as big as it is, but it's big. So that I'm not really gunning to finish this in January just because it wasn't part of my TBR. So if I get a good chunk through, I'm hoping to finish it in February. That's my update. I don't really have much else to say. I gotta bathe this kid that's getting into everything. <laughs> and I'll update you guys later. And that'll probably be the end of my weekend reading vlog. Can you say bye? Look, look, say hey, bye. Bye. What's up? It is the end of Monday night. I was going to get the vlog up this morning, but I had a very Monday morning and I didn't. So um, I just figured I'd finish reading out the day and update and then close out. So now you're getting an extra day on the long weekend vlog. Um, anyway, I'm still reading. Can you see it? Look at that rose gold, which is like my favorite. The Winter of the Witch. I'm almost halfway through. I'm taking my time with it because I love it so fucking much. Ugh. The only thing that bothers me is that why? Why this? The like, this part matches the pages so beautifully. And then there's just this white spine. If they had just done this whole cream color, like all the way through the rose gold still would have looked very pretty in any case halfway through i'm enjoying how she's writing it in parts so each segment of big i want to say climax but each section of big plot point happens in a part i think i'm on part four at this point and it's everything i hoped it would be and more i don't want to get anything get into anything too specific and spoilery so I'm just gonna have to wait for my wrap up to to get an overarching view but so good also i finished this morning because part of my monday morning is that my kids woke up at 3 a.m and did not go back to sleep but my baby slept till 7 so i was awake listening to my kids while my baby slept so i finished the benefit the silver lining is that i finished two can keep a secret by karen mcmanus and I'm gonna give it like a four, four and a half star. It's not a full five star. I preferred One of Us is Lying. However, it had me enthralled. It was a page turner. It's a quick read as most thrillers are, especially YA thrillers. But my only reason for knocking off a half star to a one star is that the conclusion, while mostly good, could have had a little bit more reasoning behind it. I didn't feel as though the outcome warranted what happened. My kids are trying to break into my room, but it's locked. <laughs> it was just, I don't even wanna call it rushed. I feel like there, there could have been a little bit more build, another 100 pages, um, and it still would have been a quick read, but it also would have given more oomph to the climax of it. However, I still really liked it. I was really enthralled. It was, uh, as I said, a page turner and I really wanted to find out what happened and I wasn't wholly disappointed by what happened. I was shocked. I didn't see it coming. I had a few theories going in. Um, I, like, 
through each chapter new things and I was wrong and wrong and like a little bit right at one point near the end which at that point you kind of hope you got at least part of it right um so yeah four four and a half stars on that otherwise that's it for my reading update I don't know if I'm gonna do a vlog next week I just kind of did it because of the Catherine Arden event so I'll vlog probably mm, I can guarantee I'll vlog during the contemporary thon next month other than that, I no guarantees. So this might be the last vlog for the month. And if that's the case, then I'll see you in the next one. Um, and as always, like if you've liked this video, subscribe if you're new here and want to see more content from me. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys are having a great start to your new year. I will see you in the next one. Uh, be my friend on all the social media platforms I have linked down below. Okay, bye.